Greetings to all. I hope and trust that Aaron is doing well. My name is Zinzi Posha Kagai and today I'll be doing a presentation on an article titled Land Reform in Zimbabwe, Challenges and Opportunities for Poverty Reduction Among Commercial Farm Workers. This article was written by Evert and Blur. The article that I'll be presenting on is based on a 1998 survey of farm workers in Zimbabwe. It details their demographics, skills, land access and viewpoints of land reform and redistribution is used to examine the very real constraints and the possibilities for poverty reduction among long-standing marginalized social groups in the ongoing fast-track land resettlement in Zimbabwe. Unless farm workers are included in the land reform in a significant number, the vast majority will join the growing ranks of the extreme rural and urban poverty. Land reform in Zimbabwe formally started in 1980 with the signing of the Lancaster House Agreement as an anti-racist attempt to more equitably divide land between black subsistence farmers and white Zimbabweans of European origin who have historically enjoyed superior political and economic standing. The specified goals of the policy were meant to change the ethnic composition of land ownership. Land allocation by the government is perhaps the most critical and bitterly debated political issue affecting Zimbabwe. The big agrarian question in Zimbabwe. This has been extensively debated and studied over the last decade. Zimbabwe's agrarian question has been a burning issue since the country's secular colonization in the late 19th century. Recently, it became recognized globally with the spontaneous seizure of commercial farms in the run-up to and after the June 2000 general election and the subsequent launch by the government of Zimbabwe of a controversial accelerated relocation program, also known as the Fast Track Resettlement Plan. In the, official, in the officially declared reconciliatory policy in the post-independence period, the agrarian issue still slices profoundly into the political and social debate, both within and outside the origin. Chuma in 1997 referred to the agrarian issue as one of the most prominent colonial legacies in post-independent Zimbabwe. Most observers acknowledge the distorted skew in Zimbabwe's allocation and distribution of fertile land and natural resources. This unequal allocation of land is an overt heritage of the colonialism of the country during the Rhodesian period and is thus one of the government of Zimbabwe's most significant obstacles since it came into power. This unequal allocation of land is prevalent in the geographical, physical, political, social and cultural aspects of Zimbabwe as the disproportionate separation of land between white and black has resonated in so many forms. The government of Zimbabwe stated that agrarian reform ambitions are understandable, if not laudable. They evolve. Restructuring of access to land and the general restructuring of the current agricultural environment, farming systems and institutions provide access to markets, credit, training and access to social, environmental and economic facilities. It seeks to increase agricultural production, contributing to long-term industrial and economic empowerment and macroeconomic development. The importance of feasible land reform policies. The events and practices that have fallen under land reform in Zimbabwe since 2000 have not, however, been that praiseworthy. They, have, they are overlaid by intersecting and overlapping policy agendas at state, national and foreign levels that have predictably drawn most regional and global interest. It is vital to examine the demographically important but neglected social community of farm workers, putatively a targeted social group to benefit from agrarian reform. The comparatively low paying, impoverished and insecure livelihoods of farm workers have been made more insecure by recent land reform practices.
examining the situation of farm workers and land reform just before the current crisis in Zimbabwe as well as after the current era would help in future planning attempts to resolve this problem until some sort of normalcy has been restored. Land reform and resettlement policies. It is nonetheless necessary to review the policy precedents that guide some of the government's responses to land reform and to note that rural social ties and land ownership are being fundamentally reshaped in Zimbabwe. A more social background for the relationship of farm workers and land reform as a means of potentially directing future poverty reduction efforts towards them is important for the future of land reform in Zimbabwe. The first phase of the land reform and resettlement program. During the first post-independence decade of 1980 to 1990, government of Zimbabwe's hands were nominally bound to the agrarian dispute by the Lancaster House Constitution, which was forged to pave the way for an end to the rule of the white minority. This constitution provided for the security of private property from forced purchase. The then dominant willing seller, willing buyer theory contributed to a restrictive market led land reform agenda during the first phase of the land reform and resettlement program. By 1997, government of Zimbabwe had purchased 3,498,444 hectares of land and had resettled 71,000 people. By the end of the 1980s, the rate of resettlement slowed significantly as the government started to adopt a progressive growth policy, also known as neoliberal development agenda. The second phase of the land reform and resettlement program has two elements. So the first element stretches from 1998 to June 2000. With the implementation of the Land Acquisition Act in 1992, government of Zimbabwe gained an important instrument to fix the land imbalance. The Land Acquisition Act of 1992 lays out the policy machinery for the second phase of the land reform and resettlement program. The Act prescribes, among other items, the rules and procedures for the compulsory acquisition of land for resettlement by Government of Zimbabwe, the implementation of a structural change style of macroeconomic reforms at the end of the 1980s, postponed any further significant redistribution of territory. During this time, now known as the inception phase of the second phase of the land reform and resettlement program, 168,264 hectares of land were acquired by the government of Zimbabwe and 4,697 secular families were relocated. Donor funds have been pledged to assist this process but have ultimately been withdrawn due to disputes with the government of Zimbabwe over the type and substance of land reform and resettlement, particularly over the question to what degree the black elite should benefit from it. By way of the Zimbabwe Constitutional Reform Bill No. 16 of April 2000 and the amendment of the Land Acquisition Act in May 2000, Government of Zimbabwe was empowered to compulsorily purchase land for resettlement without having to pay compensation, except for land improvements. With the eventual compulsory purchase of 804 farms in early June 2000 and the formal introduction of the Accelerated Land Reform and Resettlement Implementation Strategy in July 2000, Government of Zimbabwe effectively embarked on what is widely referred to as the Fast Track Land Reform Program. All of this was in the context of growing invasions and occupations of predominantly white-owned co uh, commercial farms. Uh, the second phase of the land reform and resettlement program, uh, the second element basically is the, the fast track land reform program. The introduction and implementation of the second phase of the land reform and resettlement program, and in particular the fast track program, has been related to agricultural occupations, political violence, cohesion, destruction of pop uh, property, willful disregard of the rule of law, and lack of accountability, especially 
especially in the selection of beneficiaries. Some commercial farmers and at times their groups, such as the Commercial Farmers Union, have challenged the constitutionality of the entire program and of specific elements of it. The principles and objectives of the second uh, phase of the land reform and resettlement program um, go back to the 1992 national land policy. So the objectives of the national land policy are stated as to ensure equitable and socially just access to land, to democratize land tenure systems and ensure security of tenure for all forms of land holdings, to provide for participatory processes of management in the use and planning of land, to promote sustainable and efficient use and management of land. Of Zimbabwe's total land area of 39 million hectares, approximately 33 million hectares, which is 85% of total land, are allocated to agricultural use and 6 million hectares, which is 50% of total land, to national parks and urban settlement. About half of the land is allocated in the communal areas comprised mainly of smallholder farmers. These communal areas are the legacy of the colonial policy of racial segregation and its creation of native reserves for those classified as indigenous Africans. The rest of the agricultural land is divided into large-scale and small-scale commercial farm sector areas, state farms and resettlement areas. As of 2000, the majority of the large-scale commercial farms were still owned by the minority uh, white Zimbabweans and international companies. 72% of communal areas are situated in the least fertile agroecological zones natural region, which in principle are only fit for ranching. Although some have secured a profitable livelihood from farming, the majority of the communal area dwellers are engaged in survivalist agro-based economic activities. Objectives of the present land reform and resettlement program, uh, as stated by the government, uh, is to acquire not less than 8.3 million hectares of land from the large-scale commercial farm for redistribution to reduce the extent and intensity of poverty among rural families and farm workers by providing them with adequate land for agricultural use to increase the contribution of the agricultural sector to the gross domestic product and foreign currency earnings, to promote environmentally sustainable utilization of land through agriculture and ecotourism, to develop small-scale farmers into mainstream of commercial agriculture. So this is one of the things that Dr. Davis had mentioned in one of our lessons that we had last week, uh, basically um, the, the importance of um, capacitating uh, small-scale farmers, right, if it happens that the government eventually gives them land. And lastly, to create conditions for sustainable economic, political, and social stability. Officially, the second phase of the land reform and resettlement program aims to decongest overpopulated or overstocked areas through resettling smallholder farmers onto acquired large-scale commercial farms land and on the other hand, to indigenize the large-scale commercial farm uh, sector by enabling qualified black farmers to replace white farmers. This will lead, according to the policy, the elimination of poverty among rural communities and the economic empowerment of indigenous people of Zimbabwe. The implementation plan for the second phase of land reform and re uh, resettlement program comprises two overlapping stages. So the first stage is the accelerated fast track phase. It starts from July 2000 to December 2001. It focuses on the accelerated identification of land for compulsory acquisition, gazetting of identified farms and circular placement. This phase has been highly chaotic and confrontational.
The second stage is the expanded phase, which is from 2000 to 2004. It includes valuing of properties, assessment of compensation and payment of compensation, determination of secular carrying capacity and most appropriate resettlement models, production of resettlement land use plans upon, uh, upon acquisition and demarcation of land uh, secular emplacement, provision of infrastructure such as access roads, boreholes, wells, dipping facilities, and a first phase and provision vision of secondary infrastructure such as primary road networks, schools, clinics, rural services and so forth. The, uh, the current land form uh, is clearly not following laid down policy. In fact, an argument can be made that policymakers are trying to contain actions on the ground. Land, for, uh, land reform and farm workers. So now we are fo focusing on farm workers in Zimbabwe's commercial farming sector. Farm workers still remain a highly invisible and vulnerable group. Uh, Shu in 2000 described farm workers in Zimbabwe as quasi-citizens because of their limited access to governmental services, their disenfranchisement in local government until 1998 and their cultural marginalization. It is notable that agriculture is the largest employer in Zimbabwe. 1995 estimates made by the Commercial Farmers Union bring the total farm worker population to as much as 2 million people, which is 20% of the total population. Of these, 320,000 are permanent or seasonal workers. It is noteworthy that a sizable number of Zimbabwean farm workers trace their origins back to neighboring countries, reflecting the colonial labor migrating policy for agriculture. The second phase of land reform and resettlement program and farm workers in Zimbabwe. Reports on the present farm occupations and first resettlements under the second phase land reform and resettlement program are not very reassuring as to the impact, uh, the impact on farm workers. <clears throat> Farm workers and acquired farms are not receiving equitable access to resettlement land. Farm workers on acquired farms pending acquisition and resettlement are not always being paid out by their present employer and are often chased away by their new occupants. Finally, farm workers on neighboring unaffected farms are facing an influx of displayed competitors for work. In closing, so one of the key points that I took away from this article is that there are, uh, there are pockets of political support to address the concerns of farm workers, poverty alleviation and agrarian reform. The inclusion of farm workers as a targeted beneficiary group under the second phase of land reform and resettlement program seems to continue hope, thus making the identified opportunities for poverty reduction within the ongoing agrarian reform still realizable. Furthermore, Farm workers in Zimbabwe are being excluded from agrarian reform, subject to much violence, and are being left to fend for themselves. Aside from the relatively small number of reported farm worker households acquiring land under the second phase of land reform and resettlement program, most are being forcibly displaced from their former jobs and are trying to find a place to live and a means to survive. The latter typically includes informal trading, prostitution, illegal gold panning and piecework, often on the newly resettled farms. Given the lack of residential alternatives for the majority of farm workers, as noted in the 1998 survey, their current exclusion from the second phase of land reform and resettlement program understandably leads to such activities, which likely will do little to alleviate their poverty. If the present agrarian reform does not enable more farm workers to acquire land and to improve their working and living conditions, a unique opportunity to alleviate poverty of a historically marginalized but numerically significant group is led to go to waste. This will eventually impact upon the type and extent of success of the second phase of land reform and resettlement program, and thus still constitutes a major challenge to the current government-led land reform and resettlement program in Zimbabwe. Thank you.